Uh, so I, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, this is our procedure. We'll thank our sponsors, which is Epson, Photo Shelter, Archive, Pro Photo Daily, and American Photography. Um, so as we continue this week of Guns in America, we have a terrific uh, friend, uh, Carlos Ortez, from Chicago. And later in the week, we have John Lowenstein, Kathy Schur, Barbara Davidson, Sharice May, Ned Zelson. Um, and we're thrilled to have everyone. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate everyone coming in. Uh, if you have a question, raise your hand. We'll, we'll put or we'll put it into the chat room. We'll, we can, uh, we'll get to everyone's uh, questions. If you haven't, subscribe to our YouTube channel. So um, before we start, I just want to, I've been doing it. started yesterday. I'm going to do it each night. Just three interesting facts about guns in America. Guns are used in about 68% of gun-related incidents at schools were taken from a home, a friend, or a relative. Children living in poverty, urban or rural, are more likely to die to gun violence than their more affluent peers. And lastly, black youth are four times more likely to be killed with guns than their white peers. Just some things to think about, folks. Um, so call us with that. It's your show, man, from Chicago. So, yeah, thank you, Frank. I mean, so speaking to, to the demographics that you brought up, um, all these things are true. These are all things that, that um, in the decade long of me working on this project, we all we got, um, we're, we're really, you know, can everyone see the screen? Is it, is it? Yeah, you're good. You're great. So th these were, you know, these issues are really evident to me. Um, and obviously I, I knew about these issues growing up in Chicago, you know, having my first uh, gun pointed at me by the police. Uh, it wasn't a robbery, it was, it was a police officer who pulled a gun on me and my brother for, you know, driving my dad's Nova. And it must have been about nine years old, my brother, six years older. Um, I mean, he was old enough to drive and we had to put a Rican flag on the, on the car and he threw it out the window after that, that, that stop because they, you know, he probably thought that the cops were um, profiling us and he probably wasn't wrong. But you know, the, these, these circumstances for, for black and, uh, and brown youth are, have been throughout history have been um, um, so real, you know? Um, yeah. So like the police is one thing and then your neighborhood is another thing, right? Your neighborhood is a, another, you know, outcome of where you live. If you're poor, it's worse. If, um, you know, the, the poorer you are, the blacker you are, the browner you are, the more uh, susceptible you are to violence. And if you're a male, you're more susceptible so I, I started, you know, thinking about these things early on when I was in high school. And I started thinking about the neighborhoods that were affected by these issues. Um, when I was in high school, there was these two young twins that were, my, my high school was uh, about close to 3,000 kids, 3,000 young people. And 50% of the, of the graduate, 50% of, the, of, of the, the kids, the population in the high school didn't graduate. So 50% dropped out. Um, and, and some of the kids were murdered. There were six different types of gangs in my school alone. Um, and, and it was a great school. It, the architecture was beautiful. It used to be a European neighborhood. At one point, the name of the school was ca called Carl Schurz. Um, but there was all these, issues that we are talking about now um, that we weren't really talking about in the in the mid 90s and that was the time where I was growing up call us what say what saved you call us um you know I don't know what really saved me I think I think it was my friends in a way and it was um, um, people around me I think that saved me um, and also photography saved me at one point so yeah, I'll just go through his work. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll talk about the process, my process of, of being a photographer, what, what got me interested, what made me become a filmmaker at the same time. 
and then we'll we'll just have a Q and A and and have you know I see there's not a ton of people so it's a nice um, it's a nice place to to really have a good conversation. So I started photographing on the south side um, after returning back. I was living in Philadelphia and I got robbed at gunpoint. And the, the robbery at gunpoint made me think about why was this young man that was my age, he was, he was 24 at the time, I was 24 at the time, why, why was this guy robbing me, you know? And, you know, I figured out why, obviously, in my head, but I wanted to know, like, what the fuck? Why, why did this happen to me, right? Um, and he got out of prison. He, he was in jail 13 years prior for robbing somebody. He got caught. And he got eight more years. So basically, this guy that was my age spent his whole life in jail, a story that I was familiar with, but, but it came really personal, real close. And I got back home and I, and I really wanted to photograph the outcome of gun violence on young people, their families, um, their neighborhoods, and how people are affected by it. So I started there, I started in Philly. Uh, you'll see the, the picture of the woman washing water, I mean, with water, soap in front of her house where her nephew was killed. And nobody, nobody had the decency to wash the blood for her. The fire department didn't come um, mm -hmm. and, and do that. And her nephew died in, in, in the front uh, steps of her home. And then I started really thinking about the neighborhood itself, right? Like what are, what are, what are the, the signs in our neighborhoods in black and brown communities that reflect violence, but also love and peace? Um, so these, this montage is that, right? It is, you know, painting murals of, of Jesus, of black Jesus on the west side of Chicago. And then families um, next to that on the right, it's family mourning their, their nephew, their son, inside a house because they, they felt it was too dangerous to go outside and protest. Um, and then obviously signs on the street of rest in peace. Um, for, for a young boy that went to a, a party like you know any other young boy did at the age of 16, 17. But at this party, there was, there was guns and he got shot. And this boy went to school. Um, Damien went to school at a Catholic school, even though he lived in a, in a, in a neighborhood in Englewood in Chicago. He lived, went to, his parents had him in Catholic school, right? And so, you know, I kind of like, put myself, injected myself into this because these are some, sometimes they're, they're so public, these uh, events that happen, these, these, these shootings. Um, I went with another mother to Damien's house and met her parent, his parents. Um, then we went to, to the uh, service, right? And at the service, uh, the service was the same. And, and you think about violence, right? How close it comes to you. The service was at the church where Barack Obama went to, you know, where as a senator, he went there with Michelle and the little girls. And, um, his pastor, um, I forgot, his, Jeremiah um, was, was his pastor, right? So, so these stories are, are close to home, right? Um, then there, there's a, a memorial stack of um, rocks, this woman, uh, her name is Diane. She had she would paint on each rock. She would have somebody um, airbrush the name of young people who died. And I, and I basically knew um, the families of many of these kids. But every rock that's stacked is a life lost. Um, and the uh, birthday cake for Sarita White. She was a little girl shot. At, at her birthday party, she was, I believe she was eight at the time. And this, this picture really kind of rounded off the decade long that I started, uh, when I started photographing this project. And my Sarita's family was like the first family at, that, that I kind of committed myself to, promised myself to. They also like let me into their home, right? They let me document. And this was, this decision came like, a door knock, a few phone calls, and then an embrace by her mother telling me that she wanted me to come in her home, right? Not knowing who I am, 
but come in her home and photograph her family and show what she was going through. So I've known his family for 18 years, um, the white family for 18 years uh, plus, right? Um, I shot that, this image was like one of the last images that I've made really in this project. Um, and it kind of circled back like Sarita's, what, you know, we were celebrating her 18th birthday. She would have been 18, so, but she, she didn't make it to be 18. And then, you know, I wanted to also photograph the iconography, right? How do I, how do you, how do you speak to the, the, the signs that you see of violence around you? And also of peace, right? It's, it's not all about violence, right? Because peace is, you know, these brothers holding a casket and standing up for, for peace itself, right? Um, and then the activities that happen in, in, in our neighborhoods, kids play, young cats spend money, uh, sometimes drinking and, and showing off, you know, a lot, a lot of these guys, this is not drug money, this is, you know, harder money, some, some, some dudes on this corner were electrician, they were uh, construction workers, um, some dudes sold, you know, on the street. But you know, there's a mix of, uh, of mingling going on, right? Because that's what a neighborhood is, right? It, it, it's not just one, one thing, right? We're, it's like, you know, raging bull, right? You see, you see the Italians in a, on a block in, in New York next to the pool and there's all the stuff going on, right? So it's the same thing in our, in our neighborhood. It's the same, you know, we're, we're Americans, right? We, we play, we have fun, we eat, we do the same things. Um, and that's what I really want to show about my communities. Is I wanted to spend the time just digging into the signs that you know that pop up, right? We put up Christmas trees and celebrate. That's Sarita's family in the middle, putting up a Christmas tree for her and putting up her her little angel on top of the Christmas tree. Um, and I forgot the name of this young girl right now, but she was shot in a park the one on the television um and she was part of uh, uh barack and michelle's uh barack obama's inauguration and she was shot at a park and this became a big um you know it became a big deal because she was in at the inauguration a few like a few days before after she got shot and michelle obama came uh first lady came to her funeral uh, but the story, you know, keeps continuing, right? Like life goes back to the neighborhood, more kids get killed. Some don't make the news. Some stories never get heard of. Um, and, you know, young boys play with guns, making rap videos um, on, the cor on the corner. And then like signs that kids get, right? At school, like the, these uh, two, two uh, pictures of these kids behind a jail cell, well, this is a mural on the side of a school, right? And then a memorial in the block of, of, a, of a Puerto Rican neighborhood on the, on the west side. And so, you know, I continued on. I, I, I photographed the, the aftermath, the one year. This is like the, basically the one year celebration of Sarita's birthday and this other girl that was killed down the street from her. This is in 2000, uh, 2008 going on 2009, right before um, Barack Obama became president. So these issues have been going on for a long time. In the church on the South side, ran by a Irish priest, black Catholic church, you know, and how, how they celebrate is very different. And also how they take matters into their own hands of, of creating peace in the streets is very different. And then community, um, not too far from where I live now, taking, you know, a casket and putting it on a, on a car and driving around the neighborhood. Now, you know, and, and, and this is it, right? And people join the, the protests. So these protests are going on. When, when, people, when people speak about, um, you know, when you, when you get people on the right speaking about, well, why don't you, why don't these people talk about their own neighborhood and the violence in their neighborhood? And, you know, they, 
you know, black and brown people speak about the violence in their neighborhoods all the time. Yeah. And they take responsibility and they, 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 they heal their own community. But that narrative doesn't get shown, right? That narrative is always kind of based on um, a clip, right? That you see in the news that, that's, that's very informative, right? About what happens, but not what happens afterwards, right? Or not what happens in the hood or not what happens in the barrio, right? Like those, the, these narratives don't get told too often. And I just felt that that was my, that's where my role, right? Like, how do I start telling a narrative about my community played into? And, and, and Carlos, what, what drives these folks' passion? Is it the ongoing violence? Is it the remembering of a, a friend, a cousin, a, a family member who passed away and not letting it die? Because you could see how you know it, it becomes normal, right? The, these types of situations. Can you give give us a sense of, you know, what's the inner drive for these folks? What do you mean? Exactly. You know, like, like, it, it's so easy to become apathetic, right? You know, like no, nothing's going to change, and this, this, and that. And then here you see these young families, you know, walking the streets to end the violence. Mm. You know, like yeah. what. what yeah. I, I, I think that drive is the same drive that, 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 that's taking place in, um, you know, that took place in, uh, at the high school in Florida. Um, um, oh my God, I forgot the name of the high school. Where... Parkland? Was it, was Park Park Parkland, yeah. I yeah. think it's, it's the exact same drive, right? Um, and, and obviously Parkland was, the diversity in Parkland was very different. And it was, and it was, it was so many kids at once, right? That, you know, and the kids were tired of it. And so there was this powder keg of like all these things that like they weren't gonna sit back and, and ask for prayers. They, were, they, want, they wanted action, right? And the same thing happens, like I say, the same thing happens in my, in, in my barrio, in my hood, right? In, my, in, in, in the places where we live, but we just don't have, we cannot amplify the voice. You know, we don't have money coming in from actors. You know, Common puts money in. There, there's there's um, uh, Kanye puts money. Kanye West puts money in. Um, what's there's another young cat. I forgot his name right now. But but there there's a lot of people who do get involved. You know, it's just it's not it's not. Um, you know, we we have a slow process that happens in Chicago. You know, it's not mass shooting after mass shooting, you know? So, but the numbers are, are, are very tough. You know, the numbers are very uh, harsh of young mm -hmm. people that die. Um, and, it, and then back then, and I think that's what motivates our community, right? I think that's, you know, it, it, it's never been that we're sitting on our hands and asking for, you know, for somebody to do it for us. We've been doing it for a long time. Um, we just haven't had, you know, that's what, why gangs actually started. One of the, the reasons why gangs started, you know, they started organizing in different ways, but a lot of them started, you know, the Black Panthers. They weren't a gang. They were, they were a group of young men and women who, who were like, we're going to feed our community, you know, we're going to create social programs within the structure of, of you know, the west side um, of Chicago and the south side. So it's been happening for a long time. I don't, I don't think, I, I think these communities have never been seen, you know? Okay. Um, and, and, you know, and like this, this uh, Aaron Harris, this young man was shot by the police. Um, I believe it, this is like 2007. Um, and this obviously never made national news, um, but there was like, the, the people in the in the neighborhood actually uh, Chairman uh, Fred Hampton, um, who's Fred Hampton, uh, he's Fred Hampton Jr.'s son, um, came to 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 this protest and organized a bunch of people, and they were in front of the police station for days and days and days, and it got kind of national news, but it didn't. You know, the police were like swinging the batons at people. Yeah, it just got out of control, but the police killed a young man and, 
they always find a gun, you know, found a gun. This is before body cameras. So things have changed a lot in the past, you know, 12 years. Um, families would invite me, ask me to be there. Um, so this is how I made this image. Yeah, and Carlos, when you mention, you know, money coming into the community, is it like, where does that money go? Is there a specific assistance that, it, that you know, that it, it hits, you know, the YMCA's, you know, where, you know, or, or yeah. is it, you know, a lot of it goes to Chicago politics and never to be seen no, again? No, no, I, no, no. I mean, money comes in and, and it goes to programs, but it, I mean, you're talking about budgets that are, that are, I think, you know, there was a program called Ceasefire at the time and their budget was 300,000, you know? And every year it would go away. Like, what do you, you, ba you can barely pay a staff of, of, of eight people with, you know, 300,000 or, or whatever, right? Let's yeah. say it was a million, it still is not enough money. So um, I think that city right now is dedicated, and, and I don't want to be quoted on this, but I believe is in the 30 millions, the first time since, you know. Right. So Mayor Lightfoot dedicated 30 million to these social programs. Um, and obviously, this is going around the country in different, in Milwaukee, um, you know, there's programs in Milwaukee and uh, Sacramento, California, I believe, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, this is all after George Floyd, you know, after the riots, right? After Breonna Taylor, after America has kind of been exposed to, you know, like you have to wake up and, and, and do something, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and do the do the governments on the state and local level work together, or is that friction? You know, um, again, you know, this this wasn't really a part of all the nuances that I worked on 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 this project. I, I really wanted to sh visually show a picture of the issues that took place. Right. So, okay. you know, I believe they do, um, but again, the investment you know, the investment is, is, is disattached, right? There's the, yeah. the attachment of public schools, you know, uh, Rahm Emanuel closed uh, a number, I believe, I think it was close to 30 public schools, something like that. Really? As soon as he came in, right? And these schools were shuttered. So, and, and then mental health clinics, right? So where do you start, where do you begin, right? Like, like you have to have, these social programs set in place in order to begin a, a healing process, right? So, you know, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna show um, a film, and then we can we can go from there, and uh, and then and then just do a Q and A. How are we doing? Fair enough. Time? Yeah, no, you're fine. Don't don't worry about time. Yeah, show us the film. Mm -mm. One second. So we any any other kind of closing off uh, questions? Another, another question, Carlos. How do you approach stories of young people with your photo photography? Why do you think their voices are not being seen or heard of the young people? Hmm. I mean, I, I I think that's you know the question that we always have, really. You know. Um, I think their voices are being heard more now because they have social media and they can they can be listened to, but it, it's it's just something we do, you know, as human beings. We don't we don't really pay attention to what young people need, you know, in order to thrive and and, and stay alive. Really, let me let me go to the film. So yeah, I go. started. Can you all see the, the screen? Yes. Is it, is it black full frame? Um, yes. I, so I started uh, this this film. Um, it was a part of my process, right? Then, okay. Can you see that screen there? Yep. Okay, great. So it's part of. It's called We All We Got as well. And the film. The, I made the. Film, I, I thought I was going to make it a feature, an hour long feature film. And I ended up making an eight minute film, a short. I didn't even know I was really making a short. I was just experimenting these, these feelings I had that, that, I, that, that were invoked um, 
from from you know a decade of, of seeing all the stuff that happened in front of me um but the narrative was there right this consistent narrative of what, what was happening in the street uh in the streets of chicago you know and you you hear like music popping out of cars people asking for peace in the streets um and and the film went from uh just a a gallery, you know, gallery exhibition, museum exhibition with the work I started doing to uh, running into, you know, other filmmakers asking me to, you know, submit it to film festivals. And so I started doing that and it, you know, it's, it, and it really made a lot, a, a, a pretty good run. Uh, I went to Tribeca Film Festival. It went to LA Film Festival um, and, and some other, uh, a bunch of other festivals around the country and oh Milwaukee Film Festival and and it was actually really good to be able to get a film out into spaces that people you know like at a film festival people are not usually going to the to my neighborhood right so um the demographic is very different from the demographic that would that would see it in different places so uh, I, I found it really helpful to, to, to talk about my work at film festivals. So I'm just gonna play this eight minutes, um, nine minutes, and, and then we'll talk on the other, on the other end. Wait. Shot in the head, right on the Gustin Avers. You know what I'm saying? Shot in my face when I was eight years old. Over by home that wall nothing. But still, I'm still trying to breathe, I'm still trying to do something good. I ain't got no job, but I'm still trying to do something good. I ain't frustrated yet. But I ain't gonna hurt nobody. They're gonna try to do what I can do to survive. It's called about surviving. The difference between surviving, you gotta live. I'm living. The right way. Stop the killing! Stop the violence! Stop the killing! Stop the violence! Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! Peace! Now! Peace! Now! Peace! He said he got shot in the chest. I ain't the only thing I saw. I ain't know he got shot more than once because I knew. He got shot in the neck. He's like, I'm shot, I'm shot. He must have been shot. Yeah, they had a towel on his neck. He was right on the floor. Because if he only got shot in his neck, he was dead. Jesus Christ, let everybody shout, Amen. 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 Let's say Darius. 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 In this past school year, as of today, 27 CPS students have been killed. As of today, 229 CPS students have been shot. That's 
not even counting alternative schools, dropouts. That's only Chicago public school students because nobody's counting the other numbers. But this violence has real faces on it. Now we want to call up the names of the children from CPS that died this school year by gun violence. We'll probably do that. Every mother or father out here who's lost a child, would you raise your hand? Every person out here who's a family member or a friend who has been shot or killed, lift your hand. Let's call insanity. Of silence now as we call the names of those children who lost their lives. D'Antonio Goss, Joel Baitner, Michael Pierce, Christopher Travis, William Latrell, Darnell Choice, Jawan Brooks, Andrew Powell, Michael Frazier Jr., Damian Caesar, Isaiah. Try to do good, but we already labeled from our history to say that we bad because our choice we make at a young age. But they say we already knew what we was doing. How we know what we was doing? We never had a guy. That's like a little kid that a mother tell and yell at him to sweep the floor. But he don't know how to sweep the floor because she never taught him how to sweep the floor. You gotta teach her something before it's over with. And now there ain't gonna be too much over with. We just have guidance. Till then, everything is like a, a, a movement that we can pray to be better. To our most high. No matter what God's name is, be our father.
What year was that, Carlos? Um, that was uh, 2014. 2014. So from, from some of that footage, the people, you know, like the firemen and the emergency vehicles, you know, coming in there, it, it appears that there was, there was no friction between, you know, in, in the neighborhoods like, we, you know, like we see today with, you know, um, you know the, the white cops and the white emergency vehicles and all that other stuff coming in. But he, you know, it, it seemed like they were, you know, the people were, help, were, were thankful that they were coming in to be, to be helping. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's, that, that's, that, I mean, that happens today. Um, yeah, you see that too. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, every day, you know, I, I, I think we're. I mean, where do you think that question comes from, though? No, that that question comes from me. You know, from, so that's my question, my perception of what I see in the media mm-hmm. nowadays, and my naivete of not being in that space mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. only being dictated by the media of what my perception should be. Yeah, and 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 I think, I recognize that. Yeah, no, no, thank you. And I think I think what happens to I mean that happens to all of us, right? Because we we the television feeds us a certain thing. Um you you can see the stress, right? I I, I always think about when I watch this film, I think about it over and over all the time. It always brings something different to me, right? Cuz it, it was my first film and it it evolves with me. It's still evolving, right? Even though nothing's changed in the film since I made it, right? Like I'm not touching it, I'm not doing anything to it, right? Um, like the film has made it. There's nothing going back, no re-edits or anything like that, right? right. But, but you know, you think about the process that as it grows and as it ages, and I think about like the woman holding the little boy as he's crying. She's now the fire commissioner of 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 Chicago, you know, she's the first black woman to be the fire commissioner, you know, first woman, first black woman, her name is um, Annette, Annette Hall. Um, and um, yeah, and it's crazy, right? That she she would, she would experienced her, her own, um, um, her own son was murdered. And like, she, I was cool, so. Um, and the- that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you go back, Carlos, to the neighborhood to, you know, to visit with other, any of these other families or with the firefighters? I mean, what, what do you do for, you know, your own therapeutic um, um, intuition or? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, I, I, I um, so I've obviously I made a few other films um, in the story, in this story, um, if you, if you're interested in the work, you can, you can, on my website, there's a link under books, I believe, there's a link to, to my book, so you can, you can, you know, and you can also watch the film as well. Yeah, um, Jay, Jay will put your website in, in the uh, chat room. Uh, for everybody. Yeah, you can also watch the film, the films uh, are, are on my website, you can watch them for free. And um, so, you know, I visit families, I stay in touch with people, I think, for a time there, I, you know, I would always kind of say I talk to friends. It's kind of like with photographers who mm-hmm. cut, who end up in the middle of conflict, say to each other a lot. Um, but you know, the truth is, I, I need it to also heal. You know, it's it's a good thing you're you're saying that. And I had a I had a little boy um, four years ago, and he changed my life. Right, he he got me to to not. He didn't tell me, Daddy, you got to change your life, right? But this him his soul being on earth really changed my perspective of life and how i see things and it's very difficult to go back to to doing that work again right um for me back because it's, back because it's dangerous or back because i don't want to open oh, up the old wounds oh yeah no back because i'm i don't know i don't know like i don't have a thing for danger but i just back back because the you know the wound, right? How difficult it would be to, to like process that part of it, right? As a parent now, um, and also just being away from it, right? Seeing, you know, some of these kids grown. Um, 
I mean, some of those, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the, some of those young people are, you know, young men and young women, you know, doing whatever they do successfully or not, or just yeah. living a life, right? I mean, that that yeah, that the word the word I couldn't think of for the moment, the curiosity piece of that, um, yeah. is it, it you know it, it's pretty intense, you know, even for us as a, a viewer. I mean, thinking that that's eight years ago already, my God, yeah. you know, eight, eight years in. in you know, is a uh, is eternity, right? In that space. Yeah, and I spent eight years, uh, ten years doing it. You know, so it was like a decade of doing it, and you know, kind of like just seeing. In a way, I just wanted to leave an elegy to, for my son, but also for the son I didn't know I was going to have, but for for the the young, you know, these young folks, these young people, their families, um, just leaving a story for history, right? Because you, you'll have uh, um, somebody like Donald Trump come in uh, who's not so sophisticated enough and, and would just spill out words of that these things don't happen and they do happen, right? And I think that's the thing about being filmmakers, photographers, uh, journalists, writers, poets, um, painters, we need, we need to document um, history and have evidence to to show that these things existed, you know, um, and I think that's the most important part of, of for me my work. But I I believe that you know it's the most important important part of the work we do as photographers and filmmakers. Yeah, I and you know before you said you know when you were a young young man, you know someone pulled a gun on you, you know, and and I mean certainly I can speak for myself. That seems so stinking remote from right. my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is so remote in my life. How, how, how does a young person, because we get numb to you know, like all these different stories and use, I mean, you even said it, you said it, you know, a guy pulled a gun on me, you know. Well, it, it was it, a cop, you know. It was, cop, it was that's a cop, right. right? Well, a cop. Cop. Yeah, so that, so, that's even more profound. I mean, yeah. what, is that, what does that do to you because, you know, again, you read these stories as, you know, like you think of yourself as intellectual and you read these stories about, you know, in the community, there's no trust for the black man. Right. And there's no trust for the cops is what I want to say from the black man. Like, I mean, some like a moment like that is transcending. Right. As, as it relates to you and then, you know, all your friends and older people and yeah. Right, it, ha it happens all the time. I mean, can, can you can you shed a little light for us, for me, on what what that what that does to you, and how, how does that make you feel moving forward with trust? I mean, it, it's like this, right? Um, my friend, one of my one of my great 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 friends, uh, he got he kind of shifted my life, right? It made me become a, a swimmer and then I became a lifeguard. And that really, add, you know, you asked me, how do I survive, right? And we, you know, we went to the, we went to the school. I lived in a good neighborhood. I lived in a, in a really decent neighborhood. He lived in, in the hood, right? Like he, and he's like, you know, this Puerto Rican kid, big tall man. And now he's a cop, he became a cop. Right. But the cops used to grab him and drive him from one neighborhood and drop him off in another gang territory, you know, and the other gang territory happened, happened to be where his cousin lived. So his cousin would be like, nah, man, that's my cousin. But, you know, so even, even cops, even cops experienced this, these, these, you know, like this brutality that was taking place in the nineties, you know, years of, 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 of prolonging racism. Right. And then, you know, Friends like my friend who, who's now a sergeant, you know, he's got to think about policing in a different way, right? You know, yeah. those conversations take place, right? Um, and that's where it starts, you know? Um, but, but we don't live, but we also don't live separate from each other, right? Like when all these protests were going on, I would see friends who I grew up with that are cops, you know? And I'm, I'm not going to ignore them and not say hi to them, you know? If we're working, we're working, but... I, I have to connect with them because we live in the same neighborhood. We went to the same school, right? We, we, we swam in the same water, right? 
Um, so, so, I think that's the part that sometimes we miss. It's like we yeah. live in communities with each other for the police and for the community. And that drop off of your Puerto Rican friend into the other neighborhood, is that just to fuck with him? You know, like now get like, like a punishment. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. By, by other, you know, by other cops who are Puerto Rican themselves, you know? So oh, you know the Puerto Rican cops. Yeah. 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 You know, it was like a, it was a, you, you just had a mix of cops, but, right. but they were, they were, they were perpetuating the, the history of, of the violence and racism that, that's brought down from their colleagues, their peers. You know, I, I had a cousin, another cousin was a cop who got, you know, harassed by this white cop and then they were friends, you know? Right. You know what I mean? So it, is, it's, is there a term for that, Carlos, that drop off? Like a street term, no, Otherwise, by I mean, being fucked. But behind yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, it was just something that happened. You know, that was like, I mean, like now that we have cameras, right? A lot of this behavior has changed. I hope, knock on wood. Um, obviously, it didn't it didn't save George Floyd? Um, didn't save Breonna Taylor, but a lot of this behavior is it's it, is changing i hope um but yeah no i mean that that's it's just something you know that's been happening and people are documenting it yeah very i mean yeah no i mean it's crazy and i'm sure it, it's happening you know in new york i mean you see a lot of the back and forth in new york when, when in the 90s when amadou was killed you know mm -hmm. um, and, um, and yeah you know, what what do you think the reason because i i mean i i have heard that so many times you know young people from the hood end up being police officers what what is that or or joining the military what's the transition to that what's the the metamorphosis that makes that happen i mean well, yeah. I, I mean i think i think that's the, a lot of, a lot of it is poverty you know so it's a steady job, good income, benefit. Yeah, you know. good income, steady job, something different to do. Um, and some people really want to be officers. Some people really want to be in the military and serve their country. You know, so. No, but from, go, from going from an undisciplined life to an incredibly disciplined life, you know, like how thin is that line? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say their lives are undisciplined, though. You know. Like, yeah, but I'm saying living on the street, you know, and, and living in the hood to going to being somewhat regimented and never getting into trouble again, you know, as a, as a life choice is a pretty intense transition. Yeah, no, no. I mean, but I mean, like for, for my friend, his his father was a cop. His uncles mm -hmm. were cops. So he had that that, you know, it, it happens for some kids that, that you know, um, I don't know. I mean, we're, 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 we, we're not, you know, we're not one thing exactly. We're, yeah. we're, we're a right. bunch, of, we're, we're mixed, right? There's a bunch of different issues that take place and families and, you know, so I don't want to marginalize the, you know, my community in that way, but I think, but I do think that, you know, and it happens in, in, in white neighborhoods too, where, where people just, right. they find an option to, to become a cop or, be in the military because it's a steady job and it offers something different. I mean, just to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. It's, it's just intriguing from the outside looking in how, how that how that happens. And thank goodness it does happen. And and though, I, I wonder if there's a, is a way, like, do those cops end up being better cops because they understand the street in, in a different way? Right? I think some of them do. I think some of them are, don't, you know? I think some of them right. are not too you know that that were also picked on and marginalized themselves you know so right it, it's difficult i mean i i think i think the i don't know i think the more the bigger conversation is a, a conversation about a system that's been in place um for a long time that hasn't changed you know yeah and i think it i mean it, the other people that, that were on the scene with George Floyd were, I think they were almost all people of color, you know, Freddie Gray, the officers, you know. Um, I mean, we just fall into this mentality when we're in, in, a, in a herd 
that we just do our behavior just becomes shitty as human beings. So it, it's a systematic, you know, thing that we need to change as, as, as citizens, right? Demanding what we want from the police. Um, you know, cops have a hard job right now. The cops in Chicago don't have a, a day off for, for a week, you know? So they can't put all days off because they wanna, you know, attack the violence, right? And it's ridiculous to put that on the cops, right? When there's no social programs for people for years and years and years and years, there's, the investment is not there, right? And so we just pass it on, we pass the buck on to the police, right? Right, um, and we're working seven, eight days straight. Yeah, we're you, you know, their fuse has to get shorter and shorter, right? No, and then and you got cops, I mean, you got cops, literally firemen and cops, like in that, in the, in the film, they're like, you know, like, oh my God, not again, you know, like I'm doing this, I'm really doing this. And they're doing this, you know, sometimes they go to two, two or three shootings a night. Right. Yeah, that's, so, that's, yeah, I, I don't know, you know, it, it's like, well, I mean, it is being in a war zone, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So we need, we need to, we need to take care of them too as a society, right? Like get them healthy in order, you know, for them to be able to work for the public because, a lot of them end up working on their ego, and that's not good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if anyone else has a question in the chat room, you know, put it in now. Well, you know what, Jay, open it, open it all up so if anyone has questions, call. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, um, yeah, I mean, everyone, I don't know if you had a chance to look in the chat room. I know you were talking, but everyone, you know, is just uh, in awe of your story, Carlos. I mean, oh, that, film, that film is... Um, yeah. So what, what's on the horizon for you, Carlos? I mean, what's the next story? What, you know, what are you doing? Yeah, right now I'm working on, on just stories about people in, in neighborhoods. Um, I'm working, um, I'm a National Geographic Fellow, uh, Explorer. So I'm working on a, on, on a long-term project. Um, it's been slow because of COVID and all that um, uh, uh, about how pollution affects black and brown communities. So. Okay. Asthma. <laughs> right? I know, asthma. I know. Yeah. That, 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 In New York, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like the, uh, what is the Bronx Highway, right? Yeah. Like crossing, you know, like where, where, did, where, did, where do we put structures in, in what neighborhoods these structures of, of, of as another form of violence? violence, right? You can say um, where these structures live that pollute neighborhoods and the people that live in them. So yeah, your friend um, David, David uh, Bateau says hello as well. He's in, he's hey, in David. <laughs> he's coming up soon. And you know, and, it, and it's also too like you end up working with people like David, we end up going being in the same situations. Um, like Ferguson, right? I mean, uh, John, let me backtrack. John Lowenstein was with me in a lot of these situations. Uh, he's going to talk. I forgot what tomorrow. date. Tomorrow, John's going to talk tomorrow. But John and I were, were together when the firemen were taking that family, you know, away. They were shot, you know. So you, end, you also end up being in these situations with your, your friends and colleagues, um, for, for, for many of them who went to, to cover conflict outside of um, the US, you know, I really didn't understand those stories that well. Um, so I stayed home um, and I worked in Latin America a lot, but I, I understood those stories closer to, you know, to, to, home. Yeah. My, to home the way I grew up. So. Right. And is that, you know, as a photojournalist, journalist is that um so that's a conscious choice that there are important issues here at home that i can be covering i don't need to go away i mean not not to diminish either one of course but but so that is sort of a conscious decision there's enough here for me to to try to expose to let people know um so yeah here is here's just fine you mean as far as going, you going overseas. Oh, oh, me, me. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I, 
So, I mean, my work, I think all of our work start with photojournalism yep. or journalism, right? Mm -hmm. And then it evolves into something else, right? Um, you, my work is influenced by photojournalism, but then it evolves into narrative and so storytelling. Um, what comes next, right? It might take a decade, it might take six months, it might take a year. Um, but I, I base my mindset of my work on narrative and, and storytelling in that way, I guess, you know? Right. If, I'm, if I'm answering your question, I, I hope- Yeah, no, it, it, it's, yeah, you know, those kind of questions that are- That narrative me, keeps me close to, to being able to, to, to connect with it, you know? Because right. I have been in and out of places and, and I just don't really connect, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and now with a, with a son, right? A young boy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you want to be around... Um, yeah, you got to be around him, right? Like, what's more important than that? Do you think, Carlos, these stories are closer to your heart and your, and your work is more important because you're telling these stories, these narratives? Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I mean... It's also just being able to connect with people easier in a way. Um, Building empathy. I really find it. I really find it hard being in the middle of a big event, which I'm very good at doing, but I just find it difficult to right. to to be able to do it. You know, we all find that niche, right? And yeah, you work better in this space than another space, and you recognize it, so that's half the battle. Yeah, absolutely. So right. Well, Carlos, I cannot tell you, I, I know it's, um, um, you know, it, it's, it's always uh, important to do these things. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you coming in. It's all on short notice, like everything always is these days. Yeah. But, um, you know, that, that's really great. And you, know, you have a standing invitation. Anytime you, you, you want to come on with another story to tell us, you know, just knock on my door. That's, um, you know, that's, that's an, an always. Um, and you should take a, a peek into that chat room. I mean, everyone was uh, humbled by your, um, by your story. Um, so, you know, Thank you all very much. Yeah. And, and we, you know, we continue tomorrow, um, Thursday and Friday with another, you know, stellar um, uh, cast of uh, photographers who will share their, um, share their experiences with guns in America, and um, we hope everyone can, can come in. And uh, again, Carlos, thank you so very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So watch the films, they're free on, the, on, on my website. Yeah. yeah, anything else, Carlos, you know, books, anything else? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and all that. So just my name, Carlos Herrerties, and, and we'll see you. Stay in Great. touch. All right, man, we will. Right. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Thank you.